all right guys welcome back to g auto repair today a video repairing an rv heater system the owner complains that uh there's not much uh, uh efficiency in the heating system and uh, he's planning a lengthy trip up north and he's gonna need that heater working tip top so i'm gonna let the owner that's right next to me tell you guys what the uh what the rv is yeah so this is a fleetwood uh, discovery 2005 and uh, it's a diesel pusher 40 foot lawn and uh, as you mentioned we we're trying to see if we can get the heat up um, the heater to work excellent so we already suspect what the issue is and i'm suspecting right off the bat that it's going to be a clogged heater core these are the lines going into the heater core now we have pre-warmed it up just to verify a couple things. And uh, if you touch these hoses here, they're warm. So that tells me we're getting hot coolant to the heater core. However, when you turn on the heater, you really get nothing. Really cool air, Very, eh, maybe slightly warm, but not, not working well at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out these two lines. We're gonna introduce these plastic lines and all we're gonna do is just flush it out now this is kind of a hit or miss depending on how bad it is the best way to fix this is to replace the heater core itself however in an RV you can imagine the extent of the repair so uh, even with auto automobiles this happens from time to time and you know it's not uncommon to have to flush it out you get better performance maybe even fix the problem so we're gonna try it out, see what happens. And hopefully this fixes uh, the customer's problem. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to pinch off these hoses with these pinch tools. And that's just to prevent excessive cooling from leaking out. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. We're gonna remove these two clamps and these should pop right on out. should be an eight millimeter I believe uh, this should be the guy right here so there we loosen that came out relatively easy. There we go. Okay. Okay. So, we're gonna go ahead and insert. Well, we're back. We got our hose ready. I did put this attachment 
Uh, all it is is just a little conical spigot so I can jam it in here. You could pick this up under a dollar at Walmart. It's not very expensive. So you got your regular hose, the water is on, and all you're gonna do is just gonna flow and flush out any, any uh, crud that may be in there. So we can see the, and there it goes. pretty clean in there so we're gonna go directly here to the oh there it goes yeah I did see a little bit of crud in there yeah yeah I did see a little bit there not much you could actually see it flowing I don't know if you guys can see that see small little particles flowing out look at that that's a big one right there I definitely see some some dirt in there and sediment which is normally what clogs these things up they don't get used all that often so they just start building up all types of stuff so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump this out and we're gonna get some CLR calcium lime and rust you can pick this up at your local hardware store and we're gonna pour, we're gonna pour it in here and let it sit for a few so it can start breaking apart any, any, um, any of that rust and build up in there. All right, so we have our, uh, our funnel here. Break the seal. Pour this in there. I kind of let it flow in there. We're going to see some of it coming out. Make sure it goes in the bucket. soak in there so we're gonna let it let this sit for about five ten minutes and we're gonna flush it out maybe we're gonna repeat this process two three times maybe depending on how much stuff comes out of it and uh, and then we'll flush it out completely and plug everything back on so give us a few minutes and we'll be right back with you well we're back it's been sitting here for several minutes we're gonna go ahead and uh, I did put this little clamp here to kind of hold all the all the the cleaning uh, chemical in there so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and push all this through with a regular garden hose flush it out 
and we're going to see what comes out of it. Go ahead and get this. Bring it up here. Right, watch out down there. Boom. There we go. Stop right there real quick. I want to hit it direct right here. Let me slow it down to see. Really not as dirty as I expected to see. There's definitely some stuff coming out. as dirty as I would have expected it to be. Now the same procedure you could do to your car if you're having the same issue. Whatever it is you could do it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swap this out and do a reverse flush. Change the direction. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. See that? See that? Look. All that calcium and rust and junk. That's why it's important to do the reverse flush. Because when you change the direction of the flu, you get... Look at that. See? All that affects the flow in the heater core and therefore it, you can't you can't flow enough uh, hot coolant in there to keep it to keep it uh to keep it hot. And that's why you get poor performance. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dump this over there. All right, this is just to show you guys what came out of the heater core. See how those part of this was a clean bucket. See that sediment down in the bottom? That's what clogs it up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some more, some more cleaning juice in there and do the reverse flush one more time. We're going to see what else comes out of it. We'll be back soon. All right, we're back. Been sitting here for several minutes, working its magic. So we're gonna do the same uh, operation here. We're gonna get this. We're gonna take off this clamp here. Been letting it soak for a few. I just wanna flush this. I got in there. burst of uh, gunk
just giving it some bursts of pressure to loosen anything up in there. Now I'm gonna do it again the other direction. So another, another little burst there of uh, dirty water coming out. So it's continuously getting stuff loose in there. We just gotta keep doing this process back and forth. Do it the other way again. Yeah, that's the beauty of using these clear tubes. You can actually see what's coming out. You're not just guessing. Okay, this is straight water, so this can. I didn't want to make a big mess here in the concrete. the other way again and this will probably be the last time we do it I'm just keeping pressure up against this so it won't leak around here that's why it's important to use this conical it makes a good seal here just giving it Little bursts. All right, and that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back together now. Okay. Here and here, we're gonna crank this bad boy up and see how it works. Hopefully, we've seen some kind of improvement. Like I said earlier, sometimes results be, may vary depending on how bad this is inside. That's nice and snug there. Now I do this one. this up right. and now we're gonna crank her up warm her up and see how she works so we'll be back in a few minutes after we get this uh, started up 
All right, guys, so here we are. Uh, the vehicle is uh, warmed up. Uh, I'm showing 158 degrees Fahrenheit, 158 degrees. Um, now, these engines do get a little hotter. This is diesel, they do run a little hotter. Uh, 159 now. And uh, we can right off the bat tell there is a difference in the performance of the heater. I'm getting 122 at the vents. And uh, before. There we go, let's get it there. Oh, no, it would drop a little bit, but. Yeah. Before, yeah. we weren't getting nothing. What, uh, what was the performance you were having before we did this flush? It's day to night, man. When I started, um, yeah, I was getting nothing out of it. Nothing completely. And now it, I can't believe it's 120 and the engine is not even where it's supposed to be, which is anything. It should, it should be running about 180, 190. Um, so I know for a fact that once I get to 180, 190, this will, the temperature here is going to go probably the 130, 135 for the heater. Amazing changes. So how long was the engine running the first time you tried this that you noticed your AC wasn't, or your heater wasn't working? I did it in the house for half an hour, nothing happened. I also did it in the way back from Tennessee for over an hour, and I couldn't tell a thing. I was freezing my butt off driving down. <laughs> it gets cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, remember too that uh, a, what is the length of this? Uh, 40. 40. Foot. Okay, and the engine is all the way in the back. So that hot coolant has to travel from the back all the way to the front. And uh, and I expect to see some heat loss in that time period. So from the back to the front, I do expect to see some heat loss, but this is definitely night and day from when we started uh, just uh, about an hour or two ago. So I'm gonna consider this uh, surgery a success. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video.